Hey, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom serif letters using vector shapes in Illustrator. So you can see I've got an example here and I've just gone and created this with just simple shapes and you can get some nice styles, nice looks, and you can even go ahead and create your own alphabet or if you want to make a font, it's really easy to do in Illustrator. And you can see you can get some cool effects here and all I used was the rectangle tool. And I'm going to show you how to create one of these letters now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to a new artboard. And what you want to do is get your shape tools up. So you can see I've already got my box here. You can just right click on the square or the rectangle on the left and click this little arrow and you'll get all these other shapes here. So we'll just click here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. The shortcut key is M for the shortcut to do that. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start with black. I'm going to draw a box. So we'll work on the letter H. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this so if you hold alt and shift if you're on a mac it will be option and shift and i'm going to click and drag and just drag that across so you want to keep it as symmetrical as possible because then it's going to be easy just to do one side and to duplicate it if your letter is like a curvy letter it might be a little bit harder and obviously you only place serifs on certain parts of the letter because a serif is a tail it's usually at the corners of a shape or at certain parts of it but obviously you can experiment and play around, you know, there's no set rules. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to duplicate this shape again, holding shift, drag that into the middle. What I'm going to do is find the corner and just holding the mouse button, you're going to drag that and rotate it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to decrease the width there for that, make it smaller, just like that. So obviously you want to have a bit of contrast with the widths there. So cool, that's looking good. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to add some of these tails and these serifs. So what I'm going to do is just use my rectangles and I'm going to start on the right hand side here. So I'm going to draw a box like this. I'll draw another box like this. Get a bit like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab one of these corners because we want to add a bit of variation because you can see it's very blocky and maybe we want that look, but we we want to add a bit of, of an angle. So I'm going to use my direct selection tool here, click left and click and drag on this point. And I'm going to tap the left mouse button like this just to give it a bit of an angle there just to make it more custom. So cool, this is looking good. And what I want to do now is I'm going to select these and group it together by pressing Control G. You can also go to object and group up the top there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this shape, press O for the reflect tool. It's also located about halfway down on the left hand side. And what we're going to do, we're going to locate the middle of this square here. So a, a quick way to do that is press control Y or command Y and you can see in outline mode, right? And, I, and I'll locate the center here and I'll hold my alt button or my option button, left click once and you'll get the reflect tool up. And what it's gonna do is gonna reflect this shape and put it on the other side. Make sure it's on vertical, not horizontal. And you wanna press copy. I'll get out of outline mode for a second. And you can see now it's literally just copied this side and put it on this side there, like that, which is pretty cool. You can see it's looking a bit too thin, so I might actually thicken it just so it looks more pro proportional to that overall time, like that, cool. So what I can do now, select both of these holding shift, I can group it together to make it one shape. And what I can do, instead of reflecting it, I can just hold alt. And because my smart guides are on, it'll be easy. Just rotate it, locate the bottom bit there, and it's gonna snap into point. So make sure if you go to view, your smart guides are on and it's on snap to point. And I will do that, so it's all clean. And what I can do now, select these two ends, holding Alt and Shift, making a copy of it, and clicking and dragging, and finding the top bit there, just like that. So awesome, now we've created these cool serifs, but there's one more step. So you can see, right, these are all shapes. We can leave it like that, and it'll always be, it's always good to create a copy, so I'll just duplicate, copy it there. But what we wanna do, we wanna make it one shape, so we don't have to, you know, if we're gonna go change colors and do all one point, right? So you wanna to go to Window, and go to your Pathfinder tool. And you can see here you'll get these box pop up, you've got shape modes. And what we wanna do is we wanna select our letter we created, the letter H, 
and we want to click the first one which is unite and this will unite all the shapes together as one so we click that once and boom there we have it it's all it's all one shape one vector shape and you can see um, what it's done it's added a few more anchor points here so if you want to make it more smoother then you could go and delete all those and join just um, these two here but that's fine we don't really need it because we're just playing around so what we're going to do I start to add a bit of color make a box in the background I'm just gonna go to my colors here play around with this Darker. like that and there we have it if I want to add a bit of a shadow maybe I'll select the background and I'll go to multiply boom so there we have it this is how you create a custom serif letter just using shapes it's really easy and you can have fun you can create your own letters maybe do 36 days of type play around and experiment so thanks for watching the tutorial let me know in the comments of what tutorials you want to see what you want to learn and i'll gladly make that for you so i hope you guys enjoyed it have a good day